Also, um, gonna be honest with you, my, um, as I said to one of my TV producers last night, my strength is also my greatest weakness. And the reason why I said that is I recorded a show for Monday, uh, and it is a weird show. It is, it starts out with, uh, uh, it was just a very philosophical show. And, uh, it's because there are some things happening in my life uh, that uh, are, are a little intense. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about them um, coming up a little while. And so when we finished the show last night, I said, was, was that even coherent? And he said, well, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it sure will make for a, a different Monday show. And I said, I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, my strength is also my weakness. When I was on the show last night, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, uh, I had a hard time talking to you last night because I feel like there is this giant glass wall between us because I have always been completely frank with you and completely honest. The first talk show that Stu and I did was called The Journey. And, uh, you know, it was like a 20-minute show. By the time we were off the air, Pat, uh, Stu, it was how long? Did they have it down to four minutes? I think the commercial break was longer than the show. Well, they started measuring it by sentences. If you're allowed six sentences today. That's right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, it was like the anti-progressive. It was like, it was, it was, re it really was. It was kind of the program director didn't want to cancel the show, and so they just kept cutting it down shorter and shorter and shorter until it was like, Really, I don't. You're just going to play the open, and I don't have to do anything else. That's it. That's all. Um, uh, but the reason why it was called that is because I was on a journey, and I still am on that journey. And I've always shared um, my journey with you, and I think that's why we have a bond between us. And I have been holding back some things uh, this week that have. Um, Happened. I've told you a little bit in the, in the past here on some things that have happened in my life. Um, but uh, it's gotten a little intense. And uh, I think I'm figuring some of it out. But I want to share it with you because I think it ties into the 40 day and 40 night. It, it is all of our dreams. Maybe. Maybe. We'll, we'll talk about that at the top of next and you have to understand that the, the actions may be the same, but the motivation is quite different. So he's out and somebody yells, you're a liar, and play part of this because I don't, we don't need to play very much and it, it starts to use rough language. There's Obama speaking. Okay. Um, he starts getting jostled and pushed yeah. around. And here is. I just want you to listen to it again. There is. There you heard the. Um, uh, you know you heard the audio. Now let me play it again. Um, and I just want you to hear the hatred from both sides. Feel, feel the power of the dark side. Listen. It, it, it is, um, I mean, this, this kid is brave for saying that. To be in the crowd by himself and to say that um, is, a, is a brave thing. Um, and you have a right to say that. Just as people had a right to scream that at uh, George Bush, people had a right to scream that at me and Sarah Palin when I was in Alaska. A woman came right to the stage and screamed, that and so much more um, right at us and people started to react that way and I said stop 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 and Sarah said hang on just a second you have a right my son you know fought in the war wore the uniform so you have a right to say those things and she was escorted out and um, 
after after they left, I spoke a little bit about that as well. That this is America. You can say these things. You can say these things. You don't have to be um, uh, disagreeable, but it's going to happen. Here's what I want to warn against, and I have been for I have been for four years, five years. I didn't start with you. You're the you're the last stop on this train. Um, I started with, if, if Stu remembers, how long ago was it, Stu, that I started talking to the politicians and saying, stop doing this. Don't you know what you're doing? Don't you know you're pushing the people into a into a corner that, that it, it only ends horribly? You remember that? Minimum, minimum 2006. I can certainly remember it then, but it was probably even before that. You know, and I saw this trend coming. And uh, now the people don't feel like they have anyone that will listen to them. They don't believe that the media will listen to them. They don't believe that their congressmen or their senators will listen to them. They certainly don't believe the Republicans or the Democrats. Let's be honest. I mean, I'm going to go to the polls and I'm sure that I'm going to be, you know, voting for many Republicans. But do you really believe that the Republican Party itself has gotten it? Individual candidates may have, but do you believe the Republican Party understands it? That they get it? That they're not going to get in and just do the same thing? They're not going to try to co-opt all of these people? That's why I said look, look for people with a spine over a party. Can they stand in that tempest in Washington? Um, who do you believe? And so we have been pushed into this, this place to where you don't really believe in the free market, although I, I believe in the free market more than anything else if it's allowed to fail because I know that when it's corrupt, when it's bad, it falls apart. It comes apart at the seams. Eventually, people figure that out and they stop using it. Um, they stop buying that Pretty product. I mean, look at MSNBC. Look what's happening. It's falling apart. So much so that GE has to shed it and get rid of it. And when it goes over to Comcast, it will change. I don't know what it'll change into, but it will change. Those people won't be there anymore because they're bad for business. They have no ratings and they can't make money with it. So, Matthew's what a happens? The only two I can name. When people oh, aren't listened to by the media and there's nobody reflecting their view, that's why when, when Barack Obama says that Fox News is dangerous to the republic, he couldn't be more wrong. He couldn't be more wrong. If the people don't feel that they have an outlet, if you can't let your voice be heard, there's trouble. It gives you a chance. These tea parties have been the best thing for America. What, what do you think would happen if, if you didn't have the right to freely assemble? If you, didn't have a, if you didn't have a right to speak your mind and freely assemble and let your voice be heard. I, 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 I contend people would be violent. Oh, yeah. And it's the same thing on the left. Yep. If your voice they already isn't are. listened you to, about? if you're not even recognized, you, you tend to ratchet it up. I mean, from the people who say that, oh, we've got to listen to these Muslim extremists, we have to understand their point of view. We have to understand that they believe that we have done things to them, so we should sit down at a table and listen to them. But they won't do that with the American people. And the right has been guilty of it as well. Now, I, I, I tell you, I, I, I'll, I'll sit down and, and listen, and I've, I will talk to you here in about 20 minutes. I have read their words. I know what they believe. I know what they want. Um, and they have a right to assemble. They have a right to say those things. You didn't hear me say anything about 10 to 10, and, and don't listen to them. Don't go over there. Anybody who tells you not to listen to somebody, let me tell you something. They're afraid. And here's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that their argument will lose. Either that, or they think you're stupid. I encourage you to listen to the others. 